Thank you for listening to or watching the Upland Down Under podcast. Tonight's show is recording a little bit late, live on Saturday, the 30th of December at 6.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Last week, I said I was a day late and about $600 short. Well, by crikey, I'm several days late and a couple of grand short due to the massive storms we got utterly smashed with here on the Gold Coast on Christmas evening and on the following days. And we had a heat wave on top of that, which was, well, still is a lot of fun with no aircon. Anyway, the phones are back up and running and the internet has returned somewhat. So I'll do my very best to get through this one. Although just before we kicked off, I did have a blue screen laptop crash as well. So if the internet does drop out or if it does crash and burn, I probably won't bother trying to scramble to get it all back up and running again. I'll just follow it up as soon as possible tomorrow with just a witness Zoom or something like that to run the giveaways. But see how we go. We'll try and get through it. Um, Of course, having little to no internet connection for several days, I wasn't able to get as fully prepared for this end of year show as I would have liked. A lot of the things that I wanted to go back and see, you know, where we're at um, this time last year. I wasn't able to do any of that, so I have to skip over a whole bunch of stuff for that this week, unfortunately. Anyhow, going to stick with some positive vibes, and let's assume we make it through this evening okay. On tonight's show, of course, we'll catch up on the crypto and upland market news briefly, check in on the neighborhood ratings for December, and then we'll take a look back at some of the many things that have transpired in upland in 2023. As part of that, we'll reflect back on the 2022 end of year show, that it did and what we're expecting to see in 2023 and of course update that tonight looking ahead to 2024 and of course seeing as though it is the last show of the year i've got swags of prizes to give away as a thank you to those who've supported this podcast since the rebrand in mid-august this year remember all you had to do to go in the running for 30 prizes worth well over 2 million upex that will be won tonight was to take part in at least one of the upland down under podcast weekly challenges within the NBA server. If you missed out on all night, any of those, well, you get another chance tonight and that'll be your first entry in the running for next year's big end of year giveaways. All that and more, of course, on this, the Upland Down Under podcast. So yes, for the last time in 2023, let's get a look into the Breaking Badly news and take a quick look at what's currently happening in some of the crypto and Upland markets. Now, I will try and remember not to jump off as well and we can go straight to the neighborhood ratings after that. But let's see, is it going to work? Yeah, it's going to work. Amazing. So global crypto market cap. Um, I do say last week and this week, it is a bit late. But anyway, we'll just run with it. Up 1.2% from the last snapshot. Still well and truly over the 1.6 trillion. Um, Bitcoin dominance down 5.4%, just under 50%. The coinage, Bitcoin looks like it's going to see at the end of the year above 40K, which is nice. Ethereum's up almost 5%, 2,300, a bit all over the place. Solana is just on an absolute tear. Uh, last snapshot was $83 and change. Uh, today's $104, up 20%. Uh, massive jump there. Polygon also up 20.8%, was 78 cents last week, now 98 cents, flirting with a dollar for the end of year mark. Um, everything else, not doing too bad. AVAX has had a pullback, was $44.20 last week, down just under $40 this week. Fear and Greed Index was 74 in the greed last week, 68 in the greed this week. So all in all, looking pretty healthy, especially Solana. Very happy with a little bag. I managed to dollar cost average through the year there. Um, upland stuff, non to average volumes, we are down 3.5 one percent on the transaction volume uh down another one percent on the trading volume for the 90 days unique active wallets down 3.6 percent still above 50,000 though had just over 3,000 properties minted through the week city markets a bit all over the place bakersfield up 22.5 percent on the usd pulling away from the three dollar floor now just under four dollars what else is jumping out uh dallas getting hit on the usd side was just under six dollars last week down four dollars 75 now las vegas up on the usd oakland up on up 20 percent on the upx and up 32 percent on the usd something going on in oakland there and off three dollar floor although that might be a um dj shorts one there not sure about that one from last time and then, yeah, a bit here and there all over the place. Last one, Tokyo, what's it doing? Down 2% on the UPX, under 18,000, and down 11% on the USD, under $7. And what's the other new sign? Miami, up just under 7% on the UPX, 
12,400 and flat on the USD. So that's all we're going to cover for that. Now, Upland News, uh, we'll probably save, oh, you know, I said I'm not going to go off the thing and what did I do? I went off the thing. So anyway, um, we'll save most of the Upland News, of course, for the 2023 reflection here in a few minutes. But actually, there was something I wanted to have a look at, which was, let me go back to it. That's how good the brain's working today. Uh, I'm going to move Zoom out the road, which was the kind of announcement that X1 put out before a little bit earlier on in the day. Let's see if it'll let me switch over. Is it going to? No, it's not. Why is it going to do that? All right, let me jump out of there and I'll see if I can get it to work a different way. No, it really doesn't want to play. So, yes, yeah, some neighborhood ratings. I think it was downtowns just about to take that out. Um, Red Hook made a nice little push there at the end, but it looks like they're going to get pipped at the post. And as I keep saying, it's, it's very hard for established node projects like um, Red Hook to have any sort of chance against newer nodes like Downtown because Downtown at any point in time, if they want to make a run for it, then all they got to do is you know hire some more that spark and do a bit more building. Um, so yeah, we'll just look at that quickly. So Downtown on a final score of 13.4, Red Hook's pulled ahead of Midtown Terrace, 13.288. Mercer Manor kind of sitting there not doing much and Quailwood also dropped off a bit. Um, Red Hook was closer to downtown, downtown at some stage, but as I said, downtown, they can just put a whole, more, whole bunch of more spark there and they can just continue to pull away. So I think they're well and truly got that one in the bag. Red Hook, they might sneak it in next month, hopefully, unless um, one of these other ones like uh, Preo de Bandera or something has a run. Most of these other ones are established nodes. Midtown Terrace, of course, most Manukau Wood, Greenwich Village. They kind of didn't go anywhere there. Sherwood Forest, Bayswater, Dogpatch, Boys Town, Bronxdale, Hanson Dam. And most of those, um, they're already significantly built out. So they're going to struggle with the kind of algorithm that we got to play with there. Okay. So this is what I wanted to have a look at for from X1. So he's got Upland 2023 recap and 2024 preview at everyone as we gear up for an exciting 2024 let's take a quick look back at what we achieved together last year and what's on the horizon 2023 achievements 1.5 plus a 1.5 million plus nfts minted 227 million plus transactions 44 million plus sends 300 plus in-game events 118 speedways released 335,000 plus train rides 196,000 plus flights 13 million plus hours traveled What's coming in 2024? New features and enhancements based on your feedback. More diverse and engaging in-game events. Continued emphasis on community-driven events. So pretty vague there on the end. I know some people would like to see a bit more specifics in there. Um, I guess we'll get to that once we get into 2024. So that's what they're about. So... Let me just close some of this stuff. Save my computer's brain a little bit. Now, which one is it? This one. So, yes. Yeah, they quiz the extravaganza hosts on those numbers. Yeah. Um, numbers, numbers, numbers. I mean, numbers are good. Action's better. So, last year I did up something similar where I, I went back through the year and I had a look at all of the like official announcements that Upland puts out as far as their medium posts and I put that together as a little thing going to do the same thing this year but at the end of last year's show we kind of outlined what our development targets were uh, for 2023 and as I said that was in the 2022 end of year show so some of the things we had there were property management tools so that's what we wanted to see in 2023. We're still yet to see any of those. So that's going to carry over to 2024. Immersive experiences. I think they probably got that one in the bag. There's plenty of those going on. Um, still very much an early teething process sort of situation there. It doesn't really work very fluidly on mobile, but I'm sure they'll improve that as we get through 2024. NFT bundle swap. I don't know. Did that get looked at? I don't think so. You can't offer bundles for swappage can you i think that one might be a not no 
but they did bring in uh purchased purchasable bundles so yes it's halfway there <laughs> halfway there yeah all right we'll we'll put that as a we'll tick that one in pencil um onboarding overhaul yes absolutely they s- spent a significant amount of resources getting that fixed up 3d avatars yes absolutely neighborhood ratings yes Structure ornament shops, yes. Ethereum ERC721. Well, I guess with the Sparklet proposal and everything that's got going on there, you'd have to kind of at least pencil tick that in as well. Cars as transportation and passengers and cargo um, still waiting on those, of course. So that was what we wanted to see in 2023. Bit of a mixed bag there, I'd say. So what happened in Upland in January 2023? So we had... Um, 10 million NFT to USD celebration. There was a new city announcement, Buenos Aires, uh, NFLPA Legit's playoff. Um, the start of the year is very heavy on the NFLPA stuff. I, not knowing anything about NFLPA, I would assume that just goes with the season. MV, MB Motor Sale, of course, Ultimate Fan Challenge is an NFLPA thing. January Spark Week, Buenos Aires Thrifty Trader, Ultimate Fan Challenge and Standard Challenge. As I said, I'm going to run through these really quick. February, the Fair Winds Tour. That's associated with Buenos Aires. Susan G. Gomez, HQ Building Project. Uh, UGC Carnival Ornament Sale. Big Game Challenge, NFLPA. Announcing Upland 3D Avatars. That's one of the things ticked off. NFLPA stuff, NFLPA stuff. Manguera Carnival Sale is here. There's a lot of UGC stuff associated with that. Catch Cupid Challenge. Balancing Standard and Competitive Treasure Hunt. So that was... That was, I think that was one of the first treasure hunt um, kind of things that kicked in that started to get people's noses out of joint. Um, then, of course, we had the new city announcement, Sao Paulo. So that's two cities for the year to date. Upex rewards for NFLPA collections. Another MV motor sale, structure ornament, meta venture applications, Genesis Week, early bird tickets, city hall renovations, February Spark Week, emergency earthquake relief efforts. Okay, March. Reduced air travel fees. Yes, very much appreciative of somebody who's especially lately been flying here, there, and everywhere. Very much appreciate those lower fees. Saw Polo, Thrifty Trader, March Standard Challenges, MetaVenture Directory, and Raid. Yes, the Land of Drizzle Tour, Master Builders Contest is back. St. Patrick's Day, Lost Properties, St. Patty's Day, Ornament Manufacturing, Crates and Seasons. Oh, the Crate Armageddon. That was definitely one of the highlights of 2023. Crates dumped here, there, and everywhere. So, yes, that was an interesting one. FIFA World Cup spotlight embargo is over. I believe the we've got the FIFA Women's World Cup. I believe that embargo is due to be over as well at some stage pretty soon. So, looking to see that kick off in early 2024. Ultra Rare Property Giveaway, Upland Hackathon, UGC Creator Royalties. Ho, ho. So, that was what? When did we say that was March? Yeah, March 2023. So UGC Creator Royalties was announced in March. Um, I don't know. Lily, did you want to speak to that at all? Want to really, what, what is there to say? I mean, it's, it's not here and it's backwards when it does come. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, I mean... My, I think at the time there was, I know I was kicking up a bit of a stink about it. Um, I think Los Montanas was kicking up a bit of a stink about it too. So I think they may have just put that out there as a way to just say, look, it is something that is on our radar. It is something we're going to work on at some stage. Uh, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully we get, we get that, you know, to come through as soon as possible in 2024, especially now, like March, 2023, the amount of people who were running ventures, meta ventures would have been, you know, a tiny fraction compared to what they are now. So, yeah. Yeah, there should be a way to nominate who gets the royalty fee to because not Mm. every manufacturer is the artist. Some artists are relying on other people to manufacture their stuff. And it would be nice if the manufacturer could just nominate who that royalty goes to or even a percentage to each of them, you know, just have that option to fill in a form once and and then it's done. You can't revoke it. Yes. Yes, it's a bit of a worry, that one. Um, Like I said, hopefully it all gets sorted out as soon as possible in the new year. 
So what else do we have there in March? Master Upland with the new Explorer Center. Um, ornament showrooms and blossom season here. Another MB motor sale. Natural disasters are coming to Upland. So that was the April Fool's Day thing for 2023 that dropped in March. Uh, double fools on that one. Master Builders Contest Phase 2. And then, yes, April Official introducing neighborhood ratings. Speedway Meta Ventures, uncollected earnings cap, Blossom Season, Block Explorer, Easter Egg Hunt, Master Builder, more Master Builders, Manguera Wearables, Map Asset Factory Application. So, yeah, it was here. We started to get a lot more people involved in the UGC manufacturing, or at least the very beginnings of that. Another ultra rare property giveaway and sale, Q2 Roadmap, Genesis Week, Exhibitor Applications, which was cool to see that they did. April Spark Week, Rising Star Challenge. The Rising Star Challenges, I, without having a look through, I don't remember. That seems to have dropped off. I don't remember them doing one of those for a while. I wonder why they axed that. AFA spotlights on the line. New city announcement, London and Birmingham. So if you're keeping track at home, that's four cities so far. Another MB motor sale, Block Explorer sale, Genesis Week, of course. In-person schedule announced. May London map assets. Oh, that was um, Nubex going for his. What was that? The the Bobby police officer or the soldiers or something, wasn't it? The mad scramble for those. Play for Apex in World of Football Layer Two project. Introducing global asset search, which is very helpful. Still waiting for a property search. Um, having just rebalanced all my collections recently, not having a search function in there is extremely frustrating so hopefully that comes through early too london birmingham collections thrifty trader standard challenges structure ornaments udn pro released that was a good one so more susan g go men stuff mother's day block explorers community nominations go-kart manufacturing announced so yeah that was we've only just seen dtech is the first um, UGC go-kart manufacturer released. So that was, when was that? May. So, and that's only just kicked off now. So yes, these things do take time, take some patience. Steel City Tour, Stock Car Pros, setting the stage for cafes. Genesis Week, Spark Week again. The X, another Layer 2 project coming to Upland. Genesis Week, Block Ring, Block Explorer Sale, Berlin. So what's that? Five cities preparing for life in Upland. And that got everybody really excited with that. Upland Auction House Genesis Edition. I feel like we haven't had any auction stuff go on the latter part of 2023 either. Historic Upland Tour. And then June. June's all about Genesis Week, of course. Lots of stuff for Genesis Week. Um, wearables, Wizard. Up, uh, skip over all of that. Introducing Cafes. Berlin, another thrifty trader, Stan Charles Father's Day, Sao Paulo expansion, several expansions through the year, of course, into the Grey Tour, MB Motor Sale, Spark Week, over to July, Light the Fuse Challenge, Stock Car, Apex Ermanings for Terminals. That was a big one. That's another one where a lot of people had been kicking up a bit of a stink and good to see that came through. Um, Mid-year, Summer Road Trip Challenge, another MB Motor Sale, FIFA World Cup, in the metaverse, new FIFA World Cup collections, FIFA, 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 gearing up for the Tokyo City release, Oni Force. So, yes. So, what are we up to now? Is that six? I've lost count. Six? Yes, six cities to date. Stock uh, FIFA Women's World Cup, Global Fan Showdown. Um, Tokyo is coming. Upland Kingdoms and Uplandia into the fray. More Layer 2 projects. Upland welcomes Louisa Posse in a fandom. That was cool to see too. Hopefully we get to see more of that uh, with, you know, other artists and stuff in 2024. FIFA Women's World Cup. I've got to say it was kind of, especially for people in my neck of the woods, Zoe, um, Lily, to see nothing being done as far as FIFA Women's World Cup. Like, you know, there's, they did the Lasai re release for the Men's World Cup. No, no city release in Australia, New Zealand, nothing. So that, Bit of a missed opportunity there, I would say. Um, racing update, lane switching and boosts. They put a lot of effort into racing through the year. Uh, variety, legit shop, Tokyo collection reveal, yada, yada, and totem reveal. Of course, that 
pretty much totems and all of that pretty much dominated the last part of the year from from yeah august more stock car pro stuff and then of course yeah september october november um and early december all totem stuff neon jungle what else sticking out map as a challenge um introducing kaboom that was a good one uh, and then, of course, the big one towards the end of the year as well was the Sparklet White Paper Community Review. And then, of course, the vote and everything else that came out with that. Racing Legits, Town Hall, more Master Builders, Sparklet White Paper vo Vote, Halloween stuff. Halloween this year, yeah, it was all right. Um, I still maintain that the very first Halloween was by far the best. Um Maybe that's because now a lot of the stuff gets pushed to the layer twos and all of the off mobile stuff, which I don't really engage in as a mobile only player. Um, mini game competition. That's cool. And that's, I, they haven't announced a winner for that, but I believe that's all wrapped up. So looking to find out more about that very early on in 2024 as well. Spark week back after a bit of an absence revolution, revolutionizing UGC, exciting updates for creators um, and then that's, we've just seen an announcement about that too. They're going to rejig that as well coming up in early 2024. Uh, so I did sneak in another, another submission there, try and get that through the old system before they kick over to another new system. Um, if you're currently working on something to submit for UGC, especially map assets, structure ornaments and whatnot, um, you want to get those submissions in lickety split because with this new system, it's liable to be a whole bunch of other stuff you'd have to redo again. Uh, Racing with Stakes was a, another update as well, Layer to roadmap and the Doge. That was a cool one. Um, Brazil Immersive Fashion Week, again... London expansion, totem reveals. Blah, blah, blah. Gonna skip all over that. Stock cars, ugly sweater showdown. Um, another UGC event there. Um, upland racing enhancements, more stuff with the X treasure hunting. And that was the big one towards the end of the year that really got a lot of people's noses out of joint. Um, hopefully, they can get that sorted out early in the year, too. It'd be nice to see that come back for the web based hunters. Thanksgiving, of course, Totems again, Snowdrift Showdown, ba, 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 skip all that. And then, of course, in December, Miami. So I believe that's seven, seven city releases for the year 2023. Now, I did go back and have a look last year. Um, how many do you think off the top of your head? How many city releases, not including expansions, do you think we had last year? Any guesses? Have a guess in chat or you can shout it out. What do you reckon? Nine, four, seven, six. Billy's the closest, but higher. 11, I believe. We had, according to what I could see, Bronx, Alameda, Berkeley. Uh, depends if you want to consider those as Oakland expansions or cities under their own right, I suppose. Los Angeles, Detroit, Queens, Las Vegas, Rio, Porto, Dallas, and Arlington. So a bit of a drop-off in the number of cities that release. But of course we have seen that they've changed the way they're doing that where, you know, you only get a tiny piece of the city and then you get expansion after expansion after expansion. Speaking of which would really love to see a Tokyo expansion early in the new year as well. And let me just go back to that quick little thing and we'll run through the last of that quickly. Um, December Spark Week back, Uplands Ornamental Overhaul, uh, Block Explorer Burn Mechanic. That was a cool entry towards the end of the year. I would imagine they're going to explore that a lot more in 2024. Um, Winter Wonderland stuff, Ugly Sweater Competition. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, of course, yeah. Being able to, the Ornamental Overhaul, well, I shouldn't gloss over that too much. Um, we did see the Ornamental Crate Armageddon, as I said earlier on in the year, but that's a good... Um, Good way to end that off with being able to leave your ornaments up anywhere throughout the year. Um, I keep looking at Midtown Terrace and I would love to deck out different areas of that. I could have a, you know, a Genesis area, a, a kind of um, halloween -y area, Christmas area. There's a whole different areas that I could do there, but it's just the thought of having to move all those little bloody crates one at a time again. It just gives me the horrors. So I'll have to wait and see. So I put down, these are some of my kind of, development targets i'd like to see 
the Upland team focus on for 2024. Again, this is just some of these are carried over from from the the snapshot from last year. Uh, but this is just kind of my very biased opinions. Of course, I'd love to see property management tools. Um, Upland is in its it's in its sixth year of development. Would that be right? 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. 24. Yeah, Upland begins its sixth year of development in 2024, and we're yet to see any real significant property management tools for a property trading game, which it says on the loading screen. Um, it's kind of crazy. Uh, those kind of quality of life things just make such a huge difference when you're looking to trade or, you know, set your collections and all that. It's just, especially on mobile, as I said before, it's just mind numbing to sit there and have to scroll through 3000 properties trying to find one specific property. So yes, property management tools, we have been told that they are coming. So sooner rather than later, hopefully USC, UGC, sorry, creator royalties. Yes. Um, definitely want to see some movement on that early in the year and back paid, hopefully, um, especially considering that was released in March. I believe I said uh, transportation mechanics. So transportation mechanics for, you know, cars as transportation. I'd love to see a car only accessible city release. Um, we have passenger and cargo vans. We have um, the semi trucks. We're still yet to be delivered our trailers for the semi trucks. Um, I'm kind of in a situation now with Samurai Aquatics where I'm still moving map assets as fast as I can for free. But yeah, definitely want to see paid transportation mechanics kick in. Um, what do we have drones to deliver the crates perhaps all sorts of stuff they could do there um definitely want to see some movement on that another big massive one that it would just make such a huge difference to the overall economy would be third party spark staking um getting people to be able to stake spark in your factories if you're a content creator would you know it would add massive amounts of engagement and really boost that economy love to see that Return of web-based treasure hunting, of course. Increased gamification, especially for layer one, as I said, especially as a mobile-only player. And that's one of the things that Upland has spruced for a long time, that they're the only kind of big Web3 metaverse platform out there that has a mobile element. Um, they seem to be moving further and further away from that. I'd like to see them spend a bit more time and energy into increasing gamification and experiences in that layer, that layer one platform. Uh, layer one optimization and stability. This is a huge one for me. Um, I am an iOS uh, user for the app and especially moving map assets or if I scroll over Midtown Terrace or if I go to Monero or somewhere, it's just white screen crash after white screen crash. The current um, optimization levels, it just cannot handle what's there. And that's even with um, enhanced graphics turned off and there's a few different things that you can do there to try and improve it. But it's the white screen crashes are they're kind of insane. Um, I've gotten used to it, of course, after playing for so many years, but if you're a new person coming into it and that was your experience, I think you'd be looking at it saying, well, what's actually going on here? So yes, a lot of optimization to be done in the app. Quality of life improvements. Um, soon as four is probably a good one to get into this. There's so many different ways that little different things that could be improved. Um, yeah, there's pretty much endless. So hopefully they, X1 did say they're going to take... Um, player feedback on board. So yeah, there's a lot of that's related to that. Uh, economic incentives for construction. Yes, we do know that we can put up buildings and run meta ventures out of them, but a lot of the buildings, you're never going to run a meta venture out of it. Uh, yes, your structure can boost your neighborhood rating score, but some people not really interested in pursuing that. Um, would love to see some kind of UPX boost or some way to make it Econom an economic reason to put structures up on your building. Again, that would boost the spark economy and have wide reaching implications for, you know, increased engagement throughout the community. And of course, the big one that I'm always one and not about, including just recently, is consideration for the global player base. Um, we don't all live and deal with the PT time zone. So that's kind of my thoughts for 2024 does anybody else want to put out there what they're thinking for 2024 what they would like to see as far as um, big developments or updates or changes have it no 
treasure hunt. Yeah, definitely want to see that done. Neighborhood ratings calculations. Um, you mean like alterations to the algorithm or getting more clarification on how it's all run and done? What do you what do you mean there, Sonis? Because yeah, at, at the moment it's more clarification. Yeah, that's as I've gone on and on about. It's just the it just seems utterly bizarre that the people who have been engaged the longest and put the most time, effort, resources into development, well, they're at such a significant advantage um, compared to the newer node project. So, yeah, whether whether it's a two tiered system or some way to do it, um, we'd like to see that come through for sure. I don't... I, I still want to. I'll go ahead, Sammy. Sorry. Um... I was just going to say that I would love to see some uh, more entertainment uh, partnerships uh, if possible. Like we've seen different models um, like with Fortnite, you know, they've got collaborations with artists, they hold concerts. We've now got the Plaza. So it's, it wouldn't be hard I, I don't think it would be too hard to incorporate um, musical talents into their entertainment events. Yes, absolutely. And, yeah, Roblox is very good at doing that as well. So, yeah, I agree. Uh, over to you, Brabant. Yeah, no, I just wanted to say, like, I still want to, like, see something to do again with these collection props, because, like, I know that it, at the high of, like, temp swapping, it was a bit skewed, I would say, and they were valued way too high. Yep. <clears throat> but I think now sometimes, like, seeing, like, limited collections basically being, like, sold under mint seems a bit, like, too far as well. So I still always wanted to see maybe mm -hmm. with, like, the building structures on it and then having the opportunity now with the having to hold it for like three days until 21 days to actually have the opportunity to rent out these kind of properties and therefore be able to kind of like get your one-off collection. <clears throat> so it's not as, as skewed as like you just, you know, roll in the money if you have collection props, but you actually have to build them up and you have to, you know, compete with the market to be able to, uh, you know, set your rent at, a, at the right time. So there's still kind of like a win-win situation for the, for the renter and for yourself. Yes, absolutely. I agree. And Wojnarski has kind of outlined that in chat as well, saying, didn't they foreshadow that property collection multipliers may only apply in future if buildings are on the property that may count as utility and allow base property earnings to remain unchanged? Yeah. So something in that realm to have a reason to put some structures up. Absolutely. All right. Anybody else want to chime in? No? All right. All right, we'll move on to just a few more things and then we'll hurry up and get to the giveaways. That's what I'm excited to do. So just as some general housekeeping, uh, Midtown Terrace news, the long grind to strip all of the stored Samurai Aquatics map assets continues. And if you take a look at Midtown Terrace, you'll finally start to notice that things are being cleaned up around the place. It's starting to less look like a junkyard and more like a node. So I'm very much looking forward to getting that completed. Although one at a time, moving all of these items in amongst white screen crashes and all of that, yeah, it's not much fun. But anyway, I, I want to get that done so that I can set up the Midtown Terrace 100 um, Speedway MetaVenture track with some of the awesome map assets that I've managed to get hold of, care of, DTEC, and our one and only Lou Field here as well. Um, MVE news, due to all, all of the unexpected in real life weather drama, I'm still yet to decide on the new 2024 recording schedule for this podcast and the new Blockwed Beat one. Uh, as always, that information will be first outlined in the MVA server. Also, if you know anybody you'd like to hear from uh, that's in the metaverse space for the metaverse and beyond interview series podcast, send me a DM and I'll see what I can do. You can, of course, also nominate yourself. Summer Aquatics news, um, I applied for another four showrooms this morning. So that means, well, last night and this morning. So 24 of the now 35 Summer Aquatics showrooms have been applied for and or approved are in, and are in varying stages of being open. And I managed to squeeze in, as I said before, one final submission for a new item. 
which if approved will be the first item to be manufactured in our new Chicago factory. So yes, very soon. If you do happen to win a prize, you just got to tell me um, what, sh what city you're in and I'll be able to list it on a reserve for you in anywhere across Upland. So that'll be very helpful once they all get done and dusted. UDU News, as you may have read in the announcement I posted in the NBA server yesterday, after a prolonged moribund period, the Upland Development United Project is officially retired, done and dusted. More information next week about all that. Um, what else we got? That's pretty much all I've got for general housekeeping. All right. Now, we did have one last a weekly challenge wheel from last week, of course. That was the week 19 challenge, and that was to get yourself in the contest channel in the NBA server and let us know where the what the best and worst Upland-related things for you personally were in 2023. Your name was going to roll on a list of all entrants for a chance to win a Samurai Aquatics Garden Bridge. Before we do that, though, there's some pretty good ones in there. So I might just have a quick look at some of those. Let me make sure I'm not sharing the wrong thing. And we'll just run through some of those quickly. And if you weren't already aware, this is how you get your name on the wheel for the prizes that we're going to give away today. Um, all of these people from here, staying with Mesme, they did the weekly challenge, so they get an extra entry in for the big giveaway. So Mesme said, best thing, meeting a node partner in person by flying to go to Columbia. Worst, losing all the spark I used to earn by treasure hunting. Tony san best London and Tokyo release with all the excitement and even long gone OG users coming back to mint their worst upland tier downgrade for London and Tokyo. Zoe best meeting all her upland friends and building her ideal community alongside her evergreen lasher seven, eight nodesters worst RNG sales queues. Yes. Especially getting up at two, 3 AM and treasure hunting changes. Uh, LeBan best buy into Lone Mountain Node and trying to be active there with products, products, sorry, finally getting a terminal after many, many years. Worse, not being able to buy more stuff in the store for Upex and seeing props go for 30% markup on USD. A little sad. Yes, absolutely. Caesar, best joining the NBA server. Oh, worst constant treasure hunt tackles. Absolutely. Kevin Loder, best listening to everyone bitch about the treasure hunt changes. Worse, not having enough free time to get involved with all the new wonderful Upland community things. Yeah, and I think that's that's going to get more and more and more. It's really, I mean, Upland said that for a, a very long time that you're going to have to pick what you want to focus on. You, there is going to come a time, which is kind of here already, where you cannot possibly do everything all the time everywhere. So absolutely. Angry Ursia, the worst thing for my Upland progression was going back to a normal work family schedule. This reduced treasure hunting time to almost none. The treasure hunting changes didn't help either, especially the no breath hunting. It isn't really a best thing. I won a good number of contests and prizes, including the Upland stream of Block Explorer that was only handed out on the Lotted Up Dan show. Also, quite a few decent deals on the market. Nothing stands out as game changing, no. All right, L Slack. Best part was getting his meta ventures approved and running. Worst would be constantly being bit by the FOMO dragon so many times. Yes, I thought I was immune to the FOMO dragon, but got pretty hard a bit hard there myself just recently too yc guy best uplandia becoming a thing very cool worst treasure hunting becoming phone only and tokyo downgrade yep jabna media uh best and worst of 2023 are connected best part was achieving director status congratulations worst part was as i closed in on director i was buying properties well below mint thinking my apex value would be exponentially going up whoops my cheap new purchase price becomes a new value and I bought properties thinking I was getting there faster. Lesson learned. Ah, that'll work out well long-term. Um, Grizzly best, my meta ventures opening worse. No release of hauling assets with our vehicles. Dot, 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 yet. Wolf Warner best, meta venture approval. Worst repeated speedway racetrack denials. Ouch. Moinasa best, London challenge, change. Best, London change to tier three treasure hunting allow for ongoing accumulation of undermint props. Okay, well, that's a glass half full, full approach and affordable collection props in a tier one city. Nice, that's one way to look at it. Worst, lack of official and detailed NFLPA communication from Upland. I do know they've got a few people's noses out of joint. CMs forward our issues and concerns, but are powerless when they go unanswered unless they are being instructed not to. Six week six best finding London as his favorite treasure hunting sitting city, as well as Upex and Spark scoring. Worst London getting nerfed. 
Steely Eyes best release of all the totems. They look great, and hopefully Protom Stam will be a thing for us. Worst Upland still ignores us. Oh, well, that's not very good. Crappy NFL legits. I'll stop here. Nice. So next four best having fun in Discord, conversing with all you folks, <laughs> being Bob, earning like seven million upex while earning about one thousand five hundred USD. Still in the hole, but getting better. Besting his 2023 Upland New Year's resolution, which was get to 15 spark. Now have over 25 spark. That is smash that goal. Well done. Plus layer two games. Worst continued treasure hunt changes and uncertainty plus questionable efforts by Upland to improve the real estate side of Upland. Yeah, that the whole property side of things definitely took a very big back seat uh, in 2023. I think... What would you say? 2023 was the year of UGC and the beginnings of Layer 2, perhaps. Um, hopefully, that gets a bit more love in 2024, as we said. On the flip side, Cern S4 anticipates in 2024, we'll start seeing more property. Yeah, pretty much what I've just said there. And best, let's go. Upland cheese to 2024 and absolute emoji fest. As soon as does, well done. Catmaster J, best for 2023. Getting street worth of blob Halloween decor items finally put up for Halloween 2023. I did see those. Um, yes, the old the old blobs of children's flesh. That's one for the ages, that one for sure. Only made better by a new challenge, allowing them to be up all year long. <laughs> yes, worse for 2023. Thinking about the Apex I put into the FIFA canvas things in 2022. At least I was able to use them to bring sense to London until hunting dried up there, making it worse again. Dr. Tid, best UGC slash manufacturing worse. Still not have proper tools like property management, inventory management, sub-merchant tools, etc. Yep, I agree. Discourse sales and trendy prop. Best, the project collaboration with the lovely Shackland for the Upland Hackathon 2023 submission, even if nothing came of it in the end. Well, hopefully, might get some news of that. Bit later on, perhaps worst bad experience regarding the 2023 hackathon submission. My layer one project was not suitable for the hackathon innovation track, although it was explicitly stated in the announcement in the innovation track. Contestants can let their creativity go wild. If submissions focus on building the upland community, anything goes. Anything goes until it doesn't. Combined with the UDN intern, unofficial AMA, and too late communication that is supposed to be layer two. Yeah, I mean, communication can always be improved. Um, I take that on board myself as well. Uh, Pilant Parrot, best thing for me was London release, which generally gave me a new lease of enthusiasm for Upland and helped me to turn around many of the bad choices I'd made when I started the game. That's good. And convert them into good or at least better choices. I basically sold off almost everything I had and invested in London instead, taking his monthly yield from about 20,000 to now over 80,000. Congratulations. Also ended his first master builder comp, which was fun, although I never got through because of the fault in Upland's team submission process. That sucked, but I got 50,000 UPEX in compensation. And of course, you would have learned some skills along the way, which will hold you in good stead for if you want to have a go at again 24. 24. Worst thing is not unique or unsurprising. It was the London nerf, which I think was handled so poorly and forced me to go back to scratch on my strategy. Stoked about winning a prize, by the way. Oh, yeah, no worries. Uh, Gin Skrilla, best. Meeting some cool new friends, building community together. Teamwork makes the dream work. Worst, the white background is too bright for my eyes. I agree, especially at 3 a.m. when you're trying to bot see what line you're in in the queue and the teeny tiny font on mobile. Got to screenshot it and zoom in. I uh, wish I could change the colors. They need to make the in-game messages better. Nice. I don't know how to say that one. Say Boto 7 best. It was London and Tokyo release. Both cities were good to make business. Worst trash hunting becoming phone. Yeah, the nerf. Swally 129 best. Find the upland down under podcast. Best show of the week. Good on you, mate. Worst removal of browsers for trash hunt on PC, of course. Kind of 520 best was that I finally got a car. If a cart counts. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I suppose so. Worst still don't have a car in upland here. Yeah. Brabant, best was different city releases to keep things interesting. Agree, worst was still poor communications from our plan on most of the event and announcement um, they do in the London and Tokyo rug pool to make them T3. Of course, Maui, best dinged executive and got my first airport. Being social, following my favorite podcast. Well done. Uh, worst, my airport in Kansas still only, my airport is in Kansas, still only have one car to race with. No longer you do your podcasts nor am I able to catch the Down Under podcast live most weeks. Yes, because of the time zone change. Apologies for that. Finsky, best minted three ultra rares and a train terminal. Sold all of them, though. 
got my divs a bit up too. I have also built on most UD props in my pro portfolio. Congrats, congrats. Worse, too much work. So I've been able, unable to be as active as I wanted to, and I still miss the UD podcast as it's part of my weekly routine. Down under podcast is the middle of my workday, so I can't take part. Yes. Uh, Michael Tan, best, all the user generated content being made, especially Uplandy and all the map assets. Worst, treasure hunting changes. Yep. Cassastra, worst Upland moment of 2023 was being too Apex poor for Tokyo's first city release. Yes. Staying um, liquid is one of the hardest things to do in the game, but can really generate the best rewards too. Best moment is when I win the grand prize from the NBA. Oh, she's putting it out there. Cass is claiming the 1 million already. Really just the opportunity to be on the spin wheel. No worries. Thank you, Cass. Broski, best would be joining this group and listening to the community about a very diverse range of topics. Thank you. Worst would be not having enough time to explore Upland more than what I would like to and getting into Upland when it first came out. Yes. Courage on best layer two and layer three development by community. These give some real utility to the Upland platform. Good job to all the devs that took place to all these projects. Worst, the downgrade of London and Tokyo to treasure hunting tier three. And I believe we've got two more to do. Best from Co-Ninja. Awesome communities growing and building amazing projects. Layer 2 building as well. Also looking forward to Totems and Sparklet. Worst, redundant, uh, but treasure hunting on mobile only. Um, yeah, Co-Ninja's been putting out a crap load of content as well as part of the um, the Ninjas. So check out the stuff he's got going on there. And last but not least, Bueller Man. Best, get in touch with so many great people from all over the world. And worst, all this unclear, eventually coming stuff from Upland and then the significant changes which came out from nowhere. All right. I didn't really plan on reading all of those, but then you get a little bit far through and then, well, you must just get them done. Otherwise you feel like you left somebody short. So that was last week's weekly challenge. And everybody that did that, not only do they get their name in the list for the big prizes, of course, their name's going to roll on the wheel to win a Samurai Aquatics Garden Bridge, one of the new assets that's just out there. Let's give that away now. I I do believe I have that ready. It might be on this one. Let me just get that out the road. Yeah, it's this one. So, so this is the garden reach. Oh, I was going to roll this one twice, wasn't I? First one's 10,000 Upex. Grizzly. Now, let me just double check that. I think I did say that's what I was going to do. Not that one. Where is it? Where's the prize list? Here we go. Prize list. Weekly challenge. Yeah. So the first roll, 10,000 Upex. Second roll going to be for the Garden Bridge. So uh, Grizzly gets the 10,000. Congratulations, Grizzly. And all of the figures that we announce for prizes tonight, um, that's all after fees. So there'll be 10,000 clear after fees. So um, I won't remove his name. You know what? I'll just roll it again. Let's see how we go. So this, is, this one's for the Garden Bridge. So this is the second of 30 prizes we're giving away tonight. Ooh, Koninja's just missed it. Buellerman's just missed it. I think Mesme's got it. Mesme, congratulations. So that was four. Now, I can't close that because I'm going to use that for the, for the live participants wheel. So let me get out of there. Did I press stop share? Come on, laptop. You can do it. So that was last week's challenge. This week's challenge in the contest channel, in the NBA server, of course, let us know what your top three development priorities are for the Upland team in 2024. Um, I outlined a whole bunch of mine. A uh, few of us tonight, you guys outlined some of yours as well. So get yourself in the NBA server and let us know. If you've got more than three, of course, you're more than willing more than welcome to put more than three. And if you don't have three, it's not going to be a big deal. Just let us know what your development priorities are for the team in 2024. Your name will, of course, roll on a list of all the entrants for your chance to win. A, probably I'll do another Samurai Aquatics Garden Bridge. That's um, one of the latest things we've got going on. And, of course, you'll have the first opportunity to get yourself an entry into the 2024 end-of-year giveaway prize draws. Now, that seems like it's very far away, but... Assuming that I managed to do a weekly show, you know, most weeks in the year, you might could easily get yourself 50 entries in, which might make all the difference when we go towards the end of year, the end of year prize for 2024. So that brings us on to the massive end of year prize wheel. Got another bunch of prizes up for grabs now worth in excess of 2 million UPX, including, of course, the grand prize of 1 million UPX after fees 
delivered directly to one lucky winner tonight. Um, now, this is 30 prizes, so it's going to take me quite a while to get through this list and get them all delivered and whatnot, but especially this one being an Apex. Um, assuming I know whoever wins, I've got their in-game name details, I'll deliver that um, immediately as soon as I can. So good luck, everybody. And everybody else who's who, if you're in the Zoom live tonight too, there's going to be a special role at the end for you guys as well. And I think I've got that pegged down as another 10,000 Apex. And, oh, yes. So there's another 10,000 Apex for our live participants. So that wheel will roll as well twice. That'll be right at the end, though. So that'll be 10,000 Apex and a Samurai Aquatics Monument number one. And then I'll roll it again. And that's going to be a Phantom Cart Mint number 31 as donated by DTEX Workshop Auto. So pretty cool, pretty cool prizes there. But first of all, now I'll just run through these because once we get this wheel rolling, I want to just like kind of slam it out. So we'll just... I'll just outline these so it's clear for everybody else. Now, we've already rolled the wheel twice. That was the 10,000 Apex in the Samurai Aquatics Garden Bridge. I've noted that down. Um, first up, we're going to have spark staking. So it'll be one spark for 10 days, another roll, 10 spark for one week. Then we've got some properties. Uh, there's one in Chicago with a small townhouse too. That one's in Portage Park. Uh, we've got one in San Francisco with the townhouse. That is just to that's just outside the border of Midtown Terrace, so it's very close to the track on that top right hand side. So that's a pretty good one there too. And then of course another roll seven will be for a Miami property with a completed masterpiece structure on it. Block explorers three lots of block explorers here. One will be the creepy kid. Another roll creepy kid plus a zombie. Um, that's not the super rare i think i've got a zombie and there's only four of those it's not that one of course um roll number 10 will be a creepy kid a zombie plus a pumpkin man and we've got structure ornaments we've got a unicef winter ornament for a small townhouse a locky rock alarm for a townhouse a retry 88 spark is here apartment and we've got a mixed bag of three nfts mostly Funkos, a uh, mixed bag of five NFTs. That'll be Funkos, Tale of the Crypto and Uplink Cards. And then a mixed bag of 10 F NFTs, Funko, Tale of the Crypto, Uplink Cards, Nasty Hooks, and a little creation. Of course, for those prizes, you will have to have a wax address. If you happen to win one of those prizes and you don't have a wax address and you're don't, not interested in getting a wax address, then we'll work out something. I'll get you something else to replace it. Then map assets, uh, we've got the another Summer Aquatics Garden Bridge, another roll, we've got the Love Heart Jacuzzi, then we've got another one, Samurai Model Number 1, the Slay. Then we get into the kind of big prizes at the end there. Roll 20 will be five map assets of your choice from the Samurai Aquatics Matching 11-piece set. Um, roll 21, a set of 10 directional arrows, five left and five right, as donated by DTEX Workshop. And roll 22 is a big one. That will be the full set, full 11-piece set from the Samurai Critics matching red trim set that we have currently out there at the moment. And then, of course, the UPX prizes uh, roll. The first roll of that will be 10,000 UPX, 15,000, 25,000, 50,000, 100,000. And then, of course, the one bajillion UPX at the end. And then, as I said, live participants roll. All right, so that's the plan. Now... I did say that I was going to shuffle those. Let me get some crap out of the road. Now, I can't see chat while I'm doing this. So if something comes in chat, can somebody yell at me and I'll do it. Otherwise, let's get into it. So this first one is going to be one spark for 10 days. Uh, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. And let's see who's going to win. Now, I'm not just a reminder, I'm not taking names off the wheels. So if your name is on there, you get multiple chances. More times you're on there, more chances to win. Lily Field, congratulations. One spark rental for 10 days. All right, shuffle, shuffle. Let's go again. So this is 10 spark for one week. I feel like Santa Claus. Du, 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 du. L Slack, congratulations. 10 spark for one week. Next one is a Chicago property with the townhouse in Portage Park. 
Do -do 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 -do. Who's going to be the first to double up and start stacking prizes? Now, I always say Dr. Red Beats, but it's not Dr. Red Beats. It's D. Red Beats. D. Red Beats. Congratulations. Portage Park property on the way for you. Make sure I don't press remove. Next up, this is the townhouse that's just outside the border of Midtown Terrace. Nice aqua-coloured roof for you, I believe. Mesme, congratulations. Long-time supporter of the show. She's uh, the first to double. Again. She's the first to double. She is too. Thank you. Uh, this one is the Miami property with the masterpiece structure completed on it. Can she go for a triple? It's a short name. I can't read it. LeBan. Congratulations, LeBan. Miami property. And I believe that's in the, what's the F collection there? The limited. I believe it's in there too. So extra lucky on that one. All right. Next one is the One Block Explorer. The One Block Explorer. What's well, another short name? Or is it ticked over? Cassastra. Congratulations, Cassastra. It's not the one million up X you claimed, but you're still in for a chance. Let's see. So next one, this was for two block explorer pack. You got your fingers crossed. Kind of 520. Congratulations. Two block explorers on the way for you. Uh, next one, of course, was the three block explorer pack. Do, 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 do. There's lots of short names all bunched up together there. Laban's taking another one. Three block explorers on the way for Laban. Um, I believe Laban might have had his name on the wheel 18 or 19 times out of the 19. I think Angry Ursia might have been the only one that had the full 19. Swally 129 is, that was the small townhouse ornament. Let me just write that down so I don't mark it up. Congratulations. Next one is the, I believe it's the Llama, Lockie's Llama ornament for a townhouse. What have we got? Some medium name, Angry Ursia. Congratulations. As I said, long-time supporter of the show, involved in all of the weekly challenges. Next one is an apartment ornament. I believe it's one of the Genesis Week ones, one of the very earliest ones too. It might have been the first set of UGC ornaments. Jabna Media, congratulations, Jabna Media. All right, and that brings us over to the NFT packs. So the first one was for a pack of five mixed Funko NFTs. I got some Iron Maiden ones. I got a whole bunch of stuff. Matrix, Elf, Finsky. Congratulations. I know Finsky's got a... Finsky's definitely got a wax account. Now, if you weren't here or involved in the show last year, Finsky, we, did, we ran the wheel a little bit different last year. You had to be on live to claim these prizes, especially the one million. And Finsky happened to be sick at the time and his name came up and he was in the chat, but he was passed out with a fever. So he missed out. Uh, Maui, congratulations. You have won yourself. Oh, sorry. I've put that in the wrong spot. Finsky got the three NFTs. Let me fix that up here. Finsky. Finsky got the three. Maui got the five. And now we're going for the 10 pack. All right, congratulations, mix of 10. I was too busy gas bagging. See, I wrote in the wrong spot. What's another long name? No, congratulations, Zoe. 10 NFT pack on the way for you. Now, what are we into? Okay, now we're into the Summer Critics map assets and other map assets. This one is for a garden bridge, red garden bridge. Newest Samurai Critics item out there. Might be Cass, is it? Cassastra's got another one. Congratulations. Congratulations, Cassastra. Next one's a Love Heart Jacuzzi, which is one of our USD only for sale items. 
which reminds me, I need to get around and reprice all those. The December campaign has just about run its course. Raban Swiss, congratulations. Raban Swiss, I love hot jacuzzi on the way for you. Now, this next one, I know Lily was after chasing one of these. Samurai Slate, fingers crossed. Did I press the shuffle? I didn't. I missed the shuffle on that one. Oh, well. Samurai Aquatics, model number one, a.k.a. the Slay, goes to LeBand. Cleaning up. Cleaning up, LeBand. So that was that one. Now, the next one is a pack of five of your choice from the 11-piece Samurai Aquatics and Decor set. You'll have a choice to pick what you want. Who's going to get it? I can't read that. It's too small. Bueller Man. Congratulations, Bueller Man. So you'll get your choice of those. Next person, next one, they don't have to choose because they get the whole 11-piece set. No, I'm skipping ahead. Sorry. The next one is donated by DTEC. This is for the 10 directional arrows. Perfect if you have a Speedway Meta Venture. Thank you, DTEC, for donating those. I'm going to say it again, Dr. Redbeats, D Redbeats, congratulations. Um, don't message DTEC for that. I have them in my position and I'll organize the delivery of those to you. Congratulations. Now, this is the full piece. Summer Aquatic Steak or Set, pretty big one. Pretty big prize, this one. Oh, Angry's just missed it, I think. Who's it gone over to? Disco Sirs and congratulations, Trendy Prop. Disco Sauron. Disco Sauron. All right. Now, I believe we're at the UPX prizes. So this is where it starts to get a bit, a bit palms are sweaty, mum's spaghetti, all that sort of stuff. 10,000 UPX. After fees. Who's going to get it? Who's going to get it? Da -da 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 -da. Angry Ursi's claimed another one. Congratulations, Angry Ursia. So that's the 10. Uh, shuffle, and let's go for 15. 15,000 UPX after fees goes to, it's a short name, Zoe. Congratulations, Zoe. Zoe's picked up another one. 15,000 UPX on the way for Zoe. Might help start to build a bit of a balance for... What will likely be an early city release or expansion in 2024. Next up, we got 25,000 UPX. Whoa, just jumped over. I think Angry's got it again. Angry. Wow, look at that. So that's 35,000. That's Angry's banked. Just goes to show the more times your name's on the wheel. That's math. Look at that. The more chances you get. All right, 50,000 UPX. After fees, who gets it? Or oh, Finsky, is it? No, Elslack's again. It's another one. Elslack. Congratulations, Elslack. All right. Now we're getting serious. 100,000 UPX. After fees. Goes to... I think Angry might have it again. No, Kevin Loter. Congratulations, Kevin Loter. Well done. 100,000. UPX. All right, now this is the big one. This is the 1 million UPX. I'll shuffle this a couple of times. There we go. All the best. Congra I was going to say congratulations, but um, best of luck, everybody. And just want to say thank you very much for everybody who's got involved in the weekly challenges or, you know, especially there's some people in this chat I know that set alarms and do get up at crazy AM. So thank you, everybody, who's helped support and take part. Let's see who's going to get it. One million UPX after fees goes to, it's a long name, Bueller Man. Congratulations, Bueller Man. One million UPEX on the way for you. I don't know if he's made it in. 
Did he make it in tonight? Da, 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 da. I don't know if he did. He might have missed this one. So congratulations, Spielman. Thank you, everybody who won a prize. Um, now, Mr. Levan, did you did you manage to get that list for me? I don't know, because we still got one more rolls to do it. Or two more rolls to do it. Let me just X out of there and X out of there. And we'll go back. There we go. Thank you very much. Now, let's see. Did he sneak his name in there twice? No. <laughs> Caesar, that was an intense experience. Yes. Apologies if you didn't win a prize. I do know that everybody puts in, you know, at least some effort. Um, that's kind of the fairest way that I've kind of found to do it. Um, like I said, last year we did it so you had to be on live as part of it all. I think this way it gives anybody who's you know, supported the channel or what we do at any stage through the year, you're going to have a chance to, you know, at least at least have some chance at getting a prize. Um, let me just fix this up. For some reason, when I copied and pasted that over, it was all yucky. All right. So you haven't missed out. Of course, there is still two very good prizes to give away if you are live in the Zoom. Uh, move that out of the road. And I'll move that out the road. So this, I'm going to roll this wheel twice as well. The first wheel is going to be for 10,000 UPX and the Samurai Aquatics Monument number one. Second one will be the Phantom Cart donated by DTEC. Do, 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 do. Oh, Caesar and Grizz. I think you got it, Caesar. Caesar, congratulations. 10,000 UPX and the Samurai Aquatics Monument on the way for you. Um, I'm going to leave your name on there again. And the next one is, yeah, it's a pretty good prize as well. Definitely very awesome looking cart. The first of the UGC creator carts out there. As I said, care of DTEC. Very cool phantom carts. <laughs> <laughs> it's a conspiracy. Caesar has cleaned up on the live participant wheel. Well done. So there you go. Boom, boom, he says. All right, and that's it. The laptop did manage to survive, and we got through it in the end. Um, as I said, if, if you want to take a big picture perspective at what Upland has done and achieved in 2023, I mean, it's, it's very easy to get bogged down in some of the drama and, you know, the, the frustrations that get kicked around, but... Um, I think if you were to go back and have a look of where we were and all of the things that came through, like we glossed over that, you know, that, that very extensive list of what they've done, what they've achieved through the year. Um, there's a hell of a lot in there, um, especially they are still very much a small team and seem to be doing incredible work. We're looking for that to continue in 2024, of course, along with the whole lot more. I mean, if they can take on board a small fraction of some of the feedback and suggestions that have been put put through by the community. Um, if some of that can come through fruition, um, yeah, it's going to be great. I think we'll be well-placed. Uh, definitely 2024, of course, looking for massive things with totems. Um, I want to see how that whole process works. I want to see more city releases, of course. Um, other big ones is the sparklet. That's going to just be so interesting how how that all plays out within the wider crypto space, um, what that's going to do to the in-game, in-community spark economy. Um, yeah, it's going to be a very, very fascinating year. So can't wait to see how it all unfolds. And as I said, yet yeah, still not sure what the um, schedule for this podcast is going to be moving forward into 2024. Um, keep your eyes out in the NBA. That's where it'll be all outlined there. So, 2024 what are your goals for 2024 for myself personally i'm gonna continue to angle towards and focus my time energy and efforts on the positive aspects of upland and other web3 platforms especially those that add you know kind of personal entertainment and financial value to my in real life meet suitiverse experience um i made a lot of changes towards the latter half of the year as far as my in real life um 
lifestyle and whatnot. Uh, lots of positive changes there. Looking to really dial into that and going to really try to balance the kind of online stuff with that to, you know, keep heading in a positive, positive direction. And of course, on the flip side of that is going to continue to try and disentangle and distance myself from all of the futile drama that abounds. Basically, she's in the chat. Basically, try and tap into Lily Fields' vibe a lot more of just going with the flow. So see how that goes for 2024. Um, anybody want to get their own personal goals out there for 2024? Um, as far as like uh, net worth and properties and all that, I really don't really have any much of a plan except for just kind of rebalancing and improving. What Zoe said, mine is to convert my NFT collection into lawn ornaments and open a ZWA meta venture. Very cool. Uh, the band, yes, I did say this before we get got kicked off uh my goal has to be to get a new laptop absolutely um with all of these storms and the <laughs> yeah it's just, what's just happened in the last week has just cost thousands and thousands so I, i've got to get that out of the road first um see how we go after that uh caesar 2024 get to executive halfway there lily is going to decorate all her props yep and yes lily can't get too upset about anything if you go with flow, absolutely. Um, Wynarski, just improve residual income, less but larger properties. Yep, I, I kind of dialed into that myself towards the latter half of the year. Lslack racetrack, MetaVentures, and build up Granada Hills. Kind of 520, my goal focus on buying properties and not spending my Apex on legits. Yep, I'm going to try and really dial that back as well. Uh, Zoe, no expectations, no disappointments. Yep, Brabant Swiss, chief, chief executive will be nice, but only at 55 mil or so at the moment. But who knows? you got to set a target. Absolutely. Send us for, send us for Bob to set the Discord yapping record. Meek six, number one ranking. Well, I think um, I think we're in with a fair shot, that one. That, that might be the most realistic goal of all, that one. So we'll see how we go. <laughs> Don't make me mute you, Lily says. Yes, so... Once again, just want to thank everybody who's taken part in the podcast or, you know, with all of the various things we've got going on. Um, hope everyone has had a happy and safe Christmas and that ticks over for a great new year. And we all kick off and have a lot of fun in 2024. Speaking of which, a reminder, if you'd like to get involved in this podcast live, the link to the weekly Zoom will always be dropped in the NBA server about 15 minutes before the show starts. As I've said a couple of times, not exactly sure how that's going to play out next year. Um, I've still got to work on my work roster as well. I've got to figure that in and around how that's all going to play out. And of course, don't forget that if you have an Upland NFT or Metaverse product, service or event to promote, or you're just somebody engaged in Web3 who'd like to have a chat, opportunities are available for engagement in this and the Metaverse and Beyond podcast. Send me a DM on Discord or drop a comment in the YouTube to discuss and secure your spots. Like I said, next week's show, I'm going to dive into um, some of the directional changes that's going to um, start happening with the NBA server looking to support the wider community a bit more especially like our kind of mini developing Australasian community as well so that's all I've got for this week congratulations to everybody who won a prize tonight as I said bear with me on that it will take me a while to get that all sorted out but as soon as I get off this call I gotta send Bueller man he's one million upex which he's probably gonna shit the bed he's gonna wake up and find a message that he's got a million upex in his account so it'd be a nice surprise all right thanks everybody and as i said all the best and take it easy